So we're starting a new tile now, and we're going to put our name, today's date, and a chillax tangle. Week three of three, part two. When you're ready, let's turn that over. So let's start off with a traditional and take a pencil and with each breath, making a dot in each corner, any way you like a circle, a dot, doesn't matter. And let's create that border nice and slow and relaxed, breathing in and out. Drawing that border any way you like does not matter. And a traditional uh, Zen tangle, I should say traditional, but usually in basic beginner Zen tangle classes, we have the basic string that starts from the left side, coming up to the top in an arc, coming back down, kind of curvy or arc, a little arc, and then to the right side. So it looks like an N or a Z. Doing that in pencil. Okay, so now we're going to trace over the Z. I'm going to call it a Z for Zen Tangle today, right? So take your pen and let's trace over, you probably could have done this in pen, uh, that pencil line. But it doesn't matter see, because, um, you know, it doesn't have to be perfect because that pencil line will disappear anyways. And now we're going to double it up, but we want this fairly thick. So I'm going to kind of aura it, but giving it a nice kind of a thick aura, not too thin. And now we're going to give it a thin aura. So nice and thin, tracing right above that line. Just giving it a thin aura, just on one side, no, both sides. So you see how I did it this side? I'm also going to do a thin one on this side. And in the in here as well. So the whole Z has a thin aura around it. And now we're going to still with our pen, we're going to leave some space, almost amount, kind of like the same amount of space here, not exact, but just as a guideline and draw and kind of aura this. So kind of leaving a nice thick, drawing that line and then giving that a thin aura.
And then And then we'll do the same on this side, leave some space and give it another thin aura. And now we're going to do the same on the here and here. So we're going to leave this kind of this amount of space coming, giving it an aura. So it's a thicker and then we'll give that a thin aura. And we're gonna do it on the other side as well. Okay. Now within all of the thin lines, we're gonna put in some orbs. How easy is that, right? This is gonna be a nice, easy relaxation. And in all of these thin lines, let's just squish in some orbs, tracing along the edge, connecting with the previous orb that you just drew. take your time. We have a half an hour to do this and that's plenty of time for what we're going to do here. So we're just focusing on the thin auras, putting in some orbs and I'm going to pause the recording Okay, so also with these, if you want, you can kind of color in these little triangular white specks, or you can leave them as is. I think it looks nice both ways. So that's something you can do. If you like. So I'm going to show you the next step now. I could always go back to coloring those in, but I want to do the next step. So now we're going to put in big orbs, right? We're leaving these, all these four corners are leaving, are you going to leave empty? A different pattern is going to go in there. But we're going to start with this row here, and we're going to put in a nice big orb. So many of you now know this pattern is onomato, I think it's a beautiful pattern and it usually just goes into the, like these little rows, but we created a Z today and I think, and we ordered the Z, making the whole pattern for Z onomato. And then in the corners, we're going to do something a little bit different, but let's just focus on this for now. And then in these sections, again, you can color those in. And you might want to use a thicker pen for that. But I'm going to put in the orbs first, and then I'll go back and color those in. So we're just going to keep putting in these orbs in between the auras of the mini orbs. Making them nice and big.
when you get to these kind of these weird intersections, just do the best you can. Anything goes, there's no perfection in Zentangle. Make it your own. And you make it your own just by letting go of the outcome, listening to your inner artist, your intuition, your desires. And I'm going a little bit faster than normal only because of our time. But if you're watching the recording, you can go nice and slow. Just pause the recording. Jackie, I'm going to watch the record. OK, so now I'm going to show you. We're going to continue doing coloring this in, but it does take a little time. so. I'm going to stop doing that and then I'm going to go into the pattern we're going to do in all four corners. And that is a pattern that we all love called Janelli. And so we just start off kind of doing a kind of a wavy shape, almost like a cloud. And we can do a couple of those connecting, kind of putting these clouds together. And then inside that cloud, we're going to kind of pick the middle. It doesn't have to be an actual middle of it, but just somewhere in the middle off center, draw a slightly arced line to the edge. And then leaving some space and doing that all the way around. And then at the where the uh, where the line meets the edge, we're going to come out a little bit, giving it this triangle, uh, give it an arc or a straight line, and then coloring that in. So I always come up a little bit from that line and then kind of give it this arc line on either edge, making this triangle shape or whatever shape it appears and coloring it. And sometimes my lines end up being straight rather than curved, and that's okay too. And you'll do that in each cloud.
So I guess I lied. I thought this would um, take up the remainder of the time, but I think we might be working on this longer. Now with this space extra, you could just kind of do it a little one. Or I think what I'm going to do is put in some curve lines. I'm not going to do orbs because I don't want it to take away from the onamato pattern. So I'm just putting in some, maybe some, and I could fill it in solid too. That that would be okay as well. Or I could just put in either curve lines or straight lines, just to kind of fill that up. Or you can even leave it white and put in some graphite later. drew those clouds on the edges, I won't have that issue again. So maybe I'll do that. Not that it's an issue, because we always draw what we're meant to draw. Anything goes. So I'm going to pause the recording as I put in Janili and color in the, the spaces on a motto, and then I'll be back for shading. So one, two, three, okay. and we'll take, we're going to do some shading. And now let's see, we'll start with the orbs. So I'm just going to put a little graphite right on the bottoms of these. Some people like to do the sides or the tops, but I'll just do one row now and then I'm going to turn my tile, face the tortillon towards the edge, and then bring that graphite to the edges. So I'm blending it in circular motion and pushing it towards either side just a little bit. Might even go all the way around if I feel like it. And this is something you can always go back to. If you want to like smooth it out some more or push it up some more. So I like to focus on the bottom and then kind of just push it up on one side. And once in a while I might bring a little bit over to the edge. Lots of different ways you can shade orbs. So I'll do that on all the orbs just like that. And then I'm going to take my tutyun and I can go right in the middle of these Janellis. Kind of right in the middle there, or also maybe on the little petals on the tips. And I'm putting a little graphite right along the edge of this whole pet section, just to kind of separate it. So one thing I want to mention on the recording here is that as I was drawing these orbs, I started to think about Maria Thomas, co-founder of Zentango with Brooke Roberts, her husband. You know, the and I and the way Zentango came about was that she was drawing a she's a master calligrapher and she was drawing a um, manuscript cover or manuscript for 
somebody, I believe, and she was drawing the same thing over and over again. And that's what this reminded me of today. We were drawing these orbs over and over again. And that's why they created Zentangle and where they say, you know, Zentangle is all about doing this, drawing the same thing over and over again. And that's because when Maria was doing that, she felt she described these when Rick came into the room and she was drawing and she had no idea he was in the room with the dog. And after about 10 minutes, he's like, she figured, she, he's like, where were you? Like, and what she described was things that describe meditation. She said, timeless, relaxed, in a different world. I mean, she said, um, he said, that's meditation. We've got something here. So that's what this tile reminded me of, because she was just, that's how Zentangle came about, by drawing the same thing over and over again. And that's what we did. We do that all the time when we do Zentangle, but especially with this tile, because we really did put in a lot of orbs. And I, um, I hope that you know, those of you on the recording, I hope you took your time. I kind of rushed through it a little bit because of our time here, but I'm hoping that you pause the recording and just really took your time doing this tile. And don't forget to sign it and turn it around. And my thought was, look at this and look at the Z or Zentangle, but you really, it's non-representational. You can look at it as any way you like. And thank you all for spending the past three weeks with me. Goodbye.